Our next guest made history um, over 30 years ago. Uh, first ever black producer to be nominated for an Oscar for a live action short film. David Massey has uh, successfully produced and directed several films and television shows, but now he's telling a story about Africa that hasn't been told before in his new short film entitled Passage. It's set in 1600 West Africa that takes viewers on a journey through the eyes of a village leader. Take a look. All right, looking forward to that right there. It looks riveting. Uh, David joins us now to tell us all about the project, which is a contender, I understand, for the 2022 Academy Award. Uh, good morning, David. Thank you for joining us all the way from the motherland over in Cape Verde and Africa right now. So thank you for being here on Start Your Day. Congratulations on all your success. Uh, happy to have you on our show because you're a highly accomplished producer, constantly creating. You've created so many different projects. So what or who inspired you to create this one? Actually, um, first of all, thank you for having me here, and it's great to be on. I'm glad that uh, the Wi-Fi is working and I can join you guys because we're on the <laughs> island of Fogo yeah. in, uh, in Cape Verde. Um, but um, I was watching uh, a PBS program with uh, Henry Louis Gates, and mm. uh, he came up with a, uh, a, a interesting – I'm trying not to give away the film, but he came up with an interesting uh, – fact about uh, West Africa and I hadn't heard it before mm -hmm. and I was surprised that it wasn't common knowledge and so that was the inspiration to write the script and um, didn't feel like waiting around for four years to, to, to chase the money to do the feature so I got a couple of my buddies together that I had worked with over the years and I pitched the story to them and they said let's do it so we shot it on uh, St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands so that it would match uh, West Africa. And our reference country mm -hmm. was Angola. And so that's where we depicted the costumes and, and some of the, the language in the film. I, I, I took a trip uh, over to Ghana uh, in the year of return a couple of years ago, and it's something that absolutely changed my life. And I've told many uh, people, black and white, I, it's a trip that uh, all black people have to take at one time or another in their life if they can uh, afford to get over there. But so many stories have been told about uh, this and the, the Middle Passage, and, and you're saying yours is different. Explain why yours is different. Oh, no, you're going to have me give away the ending, huh? The, the movie. Let's <laughs> no, see, how no. can I answer you? <laughs> how can I answer you without... <laughs> Um, there was something that happened between the cultures in West Africa, well, in, in all of West Africa, that happened between cultures. And, and that story has never been told, um, what transpired mm -hmm. prior to the Middle Passage. And so what we wanted to do was uh, look at that era through a different lens. Um, we felt that it's been told what happened several times um, um, as we got over to America but no one ever focused on what happened between two cultures just prior to that event and so that's what motivated us to do that and, and I think that's a story that really needs to be told because I think it's something that kind of um, comes over here as well and, and maybe even explain a lot of the, the race relations we have with one another uh, as black people as well. So I'm, I'm interested and curious to see how you guys uh, dissect that. Uh, Marla Gibbs, a lot of people know her, a uh, legendary actress from 227, The Jeffersons. She gave it high acclaim. She said that your film ha have given us an opportunity to revi revisit our history in a way that is undeniably empowering. That's high praise from such a great actress, a legendary actress, what do you hope viewers actually take from this? I mean, without giving things away, but what do you hope people get out of it? Because it's always a learning experience when we hear about our history. Well, I, you know, originally the title was Brother to Brother. And, and what you're gonna find out is there's two leaders in the film, um, um, African uh, leaders. And, and the, 
the dialogue, well, not the dialogue, but the exchange between the two men, I think is crucial. So what I hope to get out is to spread some information that's not available. Like I said, you know, I, I, I consider myself a learned man, but when I saw the information given to me by Henry Louis Gates and his PBS special, I asked myself, how come this isn't common knowledge? Um, because mm-hmm. we just don't hear of those type of experiences. So it's going to be very educational, I think, for anybody. I had a, I did a screening in L.A., and a school teacher came up to me, and she had 25 years in the classroom, and she said, wow. Mm-hmm. She says, I'm 60 years old, and this film still taught me that I still have a lot to learn. And so wow. between Marla wow. Gibbs and, and, and information like that, I think, I think we're doing the right thing. By the way, how do you like that uh, you, volcano in the back here, you know, Fogo, <laughs> in the back of us? I, I, I love it. I, I love your background. I actually got to come in and check out Cape Verde at one time or another. I'm, I've got to get back to traveling now, now that we can open up a little bit later. Um, right. Before I let you go, though, uh, like you said, you got a screening coming up in New York. Uh, I got some Oscar buzz is going on. Uh, for the first time ever, a black filmmaker won for uh, Best Live Action sh- Short Film, Two Distant Strangers. I know you were the first to be nominated for that, uh, quite an accomplishment. I, I know, did you feel like that win was a win for you? And how do you feel about the Oscar buzz uh, surrounding uh, your particular film uh, that's coming out, Passage? Well, you never know what's going to happen because voters can tell you anything, but it's almost like voting politically. Once they vote, mm-hmm. you don't. nobody's around and, and anything could happen. So I'm, I'm ecstatic. Um, that that we're being discussed. So let me say that first of all. Second of all, I am so happy uh, for the brother that won the Oscar. Uh, there were three of us that were nominated in the past, and we only got as far as the nomination. But for this brother to bring home the Oscar, um, I think we all were elated. Uh, Diane Houston was the first sister in 2006 to be nominated. Um, there was a brother, my cousin Emmett, I forgot his name. He was nominated three years ago. So we could never get over the finish line, but uh, Trayvon um, did it. And and I think that it's only going to inspire more mm-hmm. and more people to um, maybe pursue uh, this genre. Uh, I'm sorry if you hear the crying baby in the background. We're on the top of a restaurant. That's all right. In Cape Verde. No, we love it. We love it. We love that atmosphere. Give us more of that atmosphere, the volcano in the background, and, and perhaps uh, Passage, we can make it back-to-back years, that, that brothers, uh, that we can win uh, an Academy Award in that category. Best of luck to you. Uh, looking forward to seeing it ourselves. And uh, when it comes out, I'm pretty sure we'll encourage a lot of people to go out there and check it out because I know we'll learn a lot from it. Oscar-nominated filmmaker well, David Massey, thank you for starting your day with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being on.